change of perspective. Today, not in a mood. (laughs) Today, let me share this perspective. This summer, I was up at the ranch, and we were roasting marshmallows over a fire. And we were standing there, and we were talking, and we were reading. uh, I was reading the kids' stories. And the fire starts to go down, and you see the Milky Way. Now, where I have um, a cabin, it's this it's there's no there's no lights anywhere there's no electricity for miles and so it is beautiful at night and the sky is three-dimensional and i remember the first time when i was living in new york and the first time i went out there and i started seeing the sky i realized i hadn't seen the stars in forever i hadn't seen I hadn't really looked at the moon because man's construction of buildings was really impressive. The cities were awesome and it made you feel small. But I never felt small like I do when you're standing around a campfire. And I was just thinking about this this summer. The problem is we no longer look up. We no longer think, wow, there's something much bigger than me. I'm very, very, very small. And yesterday, we had that opportunity. And I'm the one who missed it. We had the opportunity to go out and look up and experience just how small and unimportant in some ways we are to the rest of the universe. It was humbling. And instead of me coming home and hearing about the kids and their experience with the eclipse, I came home in a bad mood and I didn't really care about the eclipse because perhaps I was feeling Um, not small enough yesterday. That's a miracle. A miracle is just a change in perspective. And I pray to have many, many more of those. So you're happy again? Is that the no, summary? No, I'm miserable. I'm always miserable. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, always, I, I think, always miserable. Who's the guy that we had on here that was talking about flow? Remember that guy? Yes. We had the guy in here yeah, who was talking yeah, about yeah. flow, talking about creative yeah. flow. I can't yeah, remember yeah, which yeah. book that was because we've read 1,400 of them in the <laughs> past few months. Um, but that was one of the things he talked about, and, and that's kind of what kicks it off. Um, you can get into that mode of real creativity and, and understanding Um, you know, having a different perspective on the world from just massive feats of nature that kind of kicks the human being into that, you know, world. And I think we see that a lot of times with faith, too, in that, you know, those moments of like, wow, look at that. I mean, how can you say there's no God when you look at that? That moment is, I think, you know, it's a real moment for people, and it does change perspectives. That's cute, but I can't be happy as long as there's offensive statues still up. I Thank can't. You. I just can't. What and I, and I can't I, be happy. And quite honestly, I'm having a hard time with your, oh, wow, how could there not be a God when the Flat Earthers explained this yesterday. They yeah. did. And they you explained know. it well. They did. Apparently there's a dome over our Flat Earth. Wait. So the dome, what? I guess, is somewhat semi-circular, right? It's a, it's a dome. It's a dome. Yes, it is. It's a dome. Uh, but uh, the Earth itself is just a flat round disc yes and then we've got a dome over the top of all of that's that. why it looks like it's kind of going on a like it would be a, if we were theoretically a globe of that's the logical the explanation and they also say boy isn't it interesting isn't it interesting that the moon and the sun look to us to be the same size except you say one is 
really, really giant. The one is 400 times as far away, but it's also one four hundredth the size. Come on, people. Yeah, How that's, can you believe that's that? That's stupid. I mean, the sun what are the is odds? not 92 million miles away. It's 37 miles away. That is what okay. the Flat Earth Society would like to point 37 out. 37 miles. 37 miles away. It's really the size it looks. Uh, so. so. And how is all that heat <laughs> traveling through all that cold? It's not. It's not. Right. It's just 37 miles and it's here. And if it's really that cold out there, how come it's hot here and cold in space? It's a good that question. doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. If it was warming all the way mm-hmm. f- through those 92 million miles, space would be warm. Right. <laughs> it's suddenly warm <laughs> here and cold in space. Come on. We all know that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Can't expect us to believe this stuff. They went to a point of like actually making diagrams of the sun and the moon and the earth and showing how, see, this, the, the shadows would be much bigger if that were true. That was their big point. What? <laughs> how? I mean. Wow. How? 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 How do they explain? Did we go to the moon? Do you know? Have you? No, no. Oh, We've gosh. not been to the moon. What? No. Don't right. Be, don't be silly. <laughs> that was done on a on a uh, uh, on a lot in either Nevada or California. I can't remember where. Where you've actually talked order. to the president of the? Yeah, it's been center. a long time. I think it was like twenty years ago. It was I, I was in Salt Lake City at the time, so I think it was ninety seven or ninety eight. And and uh, yeah, he. I, I was really surprised by a couple of things, like. The distance of the sun from the Earth, which I would really like me. to talk to them. I'd like to hear. It'd be fun. I'd like to hear. Be fun. The, and treat it, you know, like you know, with respect. Yes. I'd like to really understand how they believe all this works. I'd love to, instead of just say, "Oh, they're just a bunch of flat earthers." I really would like to understand. And have you the ever thinking behind been that. in a plane? I've never run into the dome. Uh, they didn't the, go high enough. That's all. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, you just didn't go that's high all. enough. Okay, go higher and you'd run but into how, it. All right. the edge too. I the edge of yeah the edge of the disc. I've flown around has the to world be somewhere, eh? right? Have you? Yeah, that, have, sure. That's you. what you believe. I mean, uh, but have you, you flown around the world? <laughs> you flown, uh, you've flown to one spot to another spot. <laughs> yeah, and you know what the the pilot said? Oh, we're going. We keep going around the world. I I swear. I mean, how would you know? You don't know. Is it something to do with, I mean, can you ever, do they, do you know, Pat, can you ever get to the edge of the earth? I, I, I know I asked him that. I don't remember what the answer was. I I, I don't remember. I demand that you find a way to get these guys <laughs> It out. might have been centrifugal force, which they may believe in, but they don't believe in gravity. So I can't believe they believe in centrifugal so force. So like we're in a giant roundup. Yeah, I guess. And we're just spinning around really fast. Yeah. Well, how come we're not all just piled well, You would piled think in? some of the water would splash over the edge, right. too. And well, what do you think is causing the waves? <laughs> and how come, how come we're not all just like, you know, pressed up against the middle, you know, a mountain in the middle of the disc? Well, if we're on a roundup ride. and there's that centrifugal force, shouldn't we all just be like pressed up against a mountain? I, I we're, these are questions we're going to have to ask of him. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. I don't know the answer to them. For those of you who believe in, you know, the sun and the moon and the... the spherical Earth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it it, it might have been profound and I missed it yesterday, but uh, I'm glad you didn't. And now this...